So the hot ends that we manufacture, the components that we make, are designed to be three times faster and last significantly longer than even the life of many 3D printers that are out on the market right now. That's our value proposition. So my name is Daniel Barus. My title is CEO and co-founder. Uh, the company is Slice Engineering. Slice like an orange slice. So the idea, I guess, really starts probably back with my parents. The best head start anybody could ask for in life is to have a loving family and my parents were really great. My dad has kind of an entrepreneurial bent as well and so growing up he wasn't in the business realm but he was in the nonprofit sector. He did a lot of community development type stuff uh, overseas so I got to see a lot of really cool places. Been to Siberia, been to Mongolia and kind of spent my childhood in places like that that are kind of unusual for you know an, an American from the south. So I got to see a ton of really cool places around the world and in seeing those places got to see new things get started there. So I think that's kind of where the entrepreneurial desire was birthed in me, so to speak. So after college, I worked in the you know corporate world as an engineer, got my degree in mechanical engineering. And while working at one of these companies, a medical device company, I ran into my co-founder. We struck up a friendship and we encountered a problem at work that had to do with 3D printing high temperature polymers and nobody could really do that very well back in 2016. So Chris, my co-founder being the guy that he is, the, the strong engineer, he went back to his garage and started playing around with prototypes. And after a little while, after about a year of testing and refining the concept, we had something that would work and it was a modular system that could be installed on multiple different types of 3D printers. So from there, we realized there was an opportunity in the market to really do something innovative and also do something that was going to have some uh, some strength behind it, some room to grow and really take off. So that was our aha moment. So it takes some guts, I think, to, to jump out from the comfortable corporate job. And for me, what the kicker was that was, I'm an engineer, so I had to see the data. So <laughs> when we started the company, I set a, a revenue target and I said, okay, if we can hit this number, then I can pay myself something. And then I can leave my day job and, and do this, uh, my passion, my hobby part-time or hobby became becoming a passion. And so we hit those numbers and I was able to leave my, my corporate job and as an engineer and come and run this full-time. And that was a really, really scary, but really, really exciting day for me and, and definitely never looked back. I'm so, so glad that I made that decision. So what we make are components for 3D printers that are specifically working in the extrusion part of the machine. So the way a 3D printer works is it takes a spool of filament of, of plastic, a polymer, and think just like a spool of thread. And then that spool is fed through something similar to like a hot glue gun, except instead of melting glue, it's melting plastic. And that hot glue gun moves around on a plate and creates a 3D object in layers. And that's what, how 3D printing works, or at least the type of 3D printing that we work with. So the part that we make of the 3D printer is the hot glue gun part. It's called a hot end. And so we work with extrusion systems that are taking plastic, melting it, and putting it out onto the build plate to create a physical, tangible model in the real world. So we make the most cutting edge hot ends in the 3D printing market. We print the fastest with the highest resolution, meaning the highest ability to print small details, and with the most advanced technology. We have more pending and more cool stuff in the pipeline, but everything is built around how do we change the, or optimize the thermodynamics of the melting process as it comes out of the hot end. So one of the main drawbacks of fused deposition modeling, which is the type of 3D printing that we do, is this really slow speed. So it doesn't print very quickly. It takes a long time to create a 3D object, faster than doing it with your hands, but certainly not as fast as could be done with certain other processes like, like traditional manufacturing. So our tool heads, our extrusion systems, help to speed up that process significantly, in some cases much as 3x what is available currently on the market. So that's a significant benefit to anybody that's trying to print something fast. Uh, for example, if you've got a business where your bottom line depends on how many objects you can 3D print in a 24-hour shift, and we give you a tool head that allows you to 3x your production for a relatively minimal cost, that's a massive difference for your business. So anybody that's doing 3D printing uh, on any type of scale um, has a huge benefit from our products. 
So our systems are all designed to work in an industrial application. So even our customers that are buying stuff for a consumer application where you don't need necessarily a really long lifetime of a part, you don't need to meet industrial maintenance requirements, our products still meet those requirements. So we've designed our stuff to work for the lifetime of the machine typically. So when we see these hot ends that we manufacture installed in any application really, typically what we find is that the hot end outlasts the 3D printer or the machine that it's being installed onto. So a lot of times, our, especially our consumer customers, will end up scrapping a whole machine and take the tool head off and put it onto their new machine because we're really providing that much of a value. They're getting an industrial grade uh, platform onto their consumer grade machine, which is a pretty exciting uh, proposition. So the hot ends that we manufacture, the components that we make, are designed to be three times faster and last significantly longer than even the life of many 3D printers that are out on the market right now. That's our value proposition. So we've got about 10 people on our team right now. We've gone from myself and my co-founder in, in the garage a few years ago up to, you know, to this place, which is a pretty exciting uh, spot to be. And Right now we've got most of our team is full-time. We've got a couple of part-time people that work with us. We've got some interns, but most of the, the team is, is actually full-time W2 employees that are here every day cranking away, helping to build the dream of, of making this the next big thing. We have a pretty close relationship with the University of Florida. That's my alma mater, uh, and most of the team actually is from the University of Florida, or at least graduated from there. And we are located physically in the University of Florida's uh, Innovation Hub uh, Startup Incubator, uh, which has been a really, really very helpful place to help grow the business, help us make contacts in the industry, and uh, provide a, a very nice place for us to be as opposed to you know, the garage, for example. <laughs> so it's a big upgrade from the garage. Um, it's been a crazy kind of roller coaster ride, I would say, to get from not really having anything at all, you know, just an idea to the point where we can support you know, 10 people with salaries and, and continue to expand and invest into the business as it grows. We definitely see the industry growing at a massive rate. It's the 3D printing industry grows at about a 25% compound annual growth rate uh, over the last almost decade and projected to continue to do that into the future. And of course, compound growth is wonders of the world as, as Einstein called it. but we're growing faster, about four times faster than the, than the industry growth rate, which is a pretty exciting place to be. Of course, we're still small, but we expect to become you know, the major player in components, especially on the industrial side, globally. The International 3D Printing Startup of the Year, awarded by 3D Printing Industry out of the UK. So we've been already recognized as the global leader in this space, and we anticipate continuing to do that for the foreseeable future. It was pretty exciting. We had champagne. <laughs> was it good champagne? Uh, it was all right. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. We've got a pretty dynamic team. We like to have fun. We like to celebrate wins. And when we fall down, because everybody does, the goal is to get right back up as quickly as possible and, and keep trucking along. We certainly make mistakes, but that's part of learning, I think, is, is really making those mistakes, and every single mistake makes us a little bit better. So we've got uh, an operations team that handles all of our logistics, you know, whether that be incoming parts from suppliers or uh, assembling the final product, shipping it out. We've got an engineering team that does uh, new product development and research and development because we are really pushing the limits of what's possible with uh, extrusion-based 3D printing with, with polymers. And we've also got a sales and marketing team, which right now is mostly me, but uh, we've got some, some uh, you know, outsourced help with that as well. And then uh, one person on the customer support side that really engages directly with the customer every day. Although a lot of us are still doing that. Most of the team is still involved in day-to-day -day conversations with the customer. And that helps us stay focused on what the customer needs and really where the market is going because we're getting this constant daily feedback from our customers every single day. One of the things that we're really passionate about is trying to optimize our supply chain to be as eco-friendly as possible. So we try to get as much as we can from North America. In fact, a lot of our um, 
the vast majority, I think it's 96% by revenue of our components are actually made in the United States. And then of course we ship them around the world to 40 different countries, but most of it is made in the United States. And that helps of course with reducing carbon footprint, reducing you know, shipping times, reducing supply chain delays. All of those things are helpful as a business, but they're also helpful to the environment. And that's something we're really passionate about. Um, we try to source things that are mostly recyclable for our packaging so that you're getting something that instead of going into a landfill and ending up in the ocean, ends up in a, in a recycling plant that they can then be reused uh, in another fashion. Something interesting about the 3D printing industry in general is that there's a lot of effort being put into figuring out how to take a lot of these plastics uh, that, are, that are in the oceans or in landfills and turn them into a 3D printing filament so it can be repurposed. So there's several companies that are using PETG, which is uh, basically what water bottles are made out of, and they're using that to create filament. And of course, that just creates this you know, virtuous cycle of being able to use an item, break it down, turn it into filament, turn it into another item, and continue to do that, hopefully indefinitely, as opposed to creating a lot of new thermoplastics. And we work with several, of, several companies like that that are looking at ways to, to recycle and are actively recycling filaments. A big part of our competitive edge is that we really look at innovation first. Our first value on our core values list is value added innovation. So we're always trying to find ways to look at what is being done in the market right now and say, how do we not just meet what's being done in the market, but how do we leapfrog that with a totally new idea that changes the way that people really look at 3D printing, whether it be increasing speed or decreasing the uh, frequency of failures or um, increasing resolution. Those are kind of our three things that we look at most often. But our engineering team is really a, a core competitive advantage. And also I mentioned supply chain earlier. Being able to manufacture things in the United States makes things a little bit more expensive, but it also means that we're able to maintain relationships with our suppliers that are built on mutual trust and understanding. And that really helped us not only get through COVID, but grow significantly to the point where we're able to you know, have a conversation with Coro Florida about being a second stage company because we had a reliable supply chain, whereas all the rest of our competitors were struggling to hold, to get inventory and get stock uh, in so that they could continue to pay the bills. With any business, of course, significant barriers to entry as well as challenges for growth. And one of the main ones that we've seen has been one, obviously, getting the word out, right? That's, that's difficult to do. But that's the same challenge that every business faces. Similar to any manufacturer, I think we've, we do have problems with finding the right people sometimes because 3D printing is such a relatively new concept to the broader public that it's uh, not something that's typically taught in a high school or sometimes even in a college. I've encountered people many, many times that I try to explain to them what I do and you know they get a blank look on their faces and say, like, you work with paper? No, 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 not with paper, three-dimensional three printing and then the concept just doesn't make sense because they've never seen it before. And so when you're encountering that kind of barrier, it's difficult to find somebody that has the specialized skills, that knows how to work on the machines and really understands the science and the thermodynamics behind what's happening in the extrusion process to be able to you know, provide sort of immediate value as opposed to requiring months and months of training. So that is, that is a significant challenge right now. Uh, and one that I'm excited to see, you know, certain colleges are, are addressing, certain companies are investing. In fact, there's a, a couple companies in Orlando that are doing workshops for the general public, but then also going into high schools and saying, here's what a 3D printer is. Here is a program that does what's called computer-aided design. This is how you make a 3D model. And the beauty of 3D printing is that you can imagine a concept in your mind create it on the computer and then hold it as a tangible object in real life within the same 24 hour period. And there is no time in history before that that has been possible unless you were, you know, a Michelangelo or a Leonardo da Vinci. And there's just not that many of those. I'm certainly not one of those. Uh, there are a lot of people that are much better at doing computer aided design, 3D modeling than I am, but being able to take that concept and turn it into even just a rough prototype is an incredible, incredible power that I think has the opportunity to change a lot of people's lives.
If I could go back and give myself some advice a few years back, or any aspiring entrepreneur, I would say try to talk to as many people as you can that have been there and done that, not necessarily doing exactly the same thing that you're doing, but that have varied life experiences from what you've done. And that perspective allows you to maybe see around some corners that you wouldn't have normally been able to see around, whether that be in the financial area or in hiring or how to deal with difficult person on the team, whatever that is, people that run a business are usually very willing to talk to you and they also a lot of times have really good advice. So get advice from as many people as possible, filter it, figure out what works for you, and then execute your game plan. And then the last thing I'd say is, I mentioned this earlier, but there are so many resources within the state of Florida and even at the federal level for companies that are trying to get started that really have something that they want to bring to the market. And there are a ton of opportunities, whether it be through Grow Florida or Florida Makes or Enterprise Florida or the SBA. There are so many opportunities to get training, to get uh, help, to get financial aid. It's really, there's an incredible ecosystem if you just take advantage of it. So. Definitely a lot of people that I would be happy to thank for helping us get to this stage. First one would be God. He's given me not only the background, but also the, the ability to keep pushing this. But secondly, my family who has supported me through this craziness, especially my wife. She has put up with many long, long nights where I'm not coming to bed till you know, two o'clock in the morning and getting up at four to go keep working. And so definitely them. And, and then the biggest shout out probably goes to my team. This is, this is not a one man show. This is not a one man shop. This is a team effort every moment of every day. And uh, I would not be anywhere near this award if it was not for my phenomenal team. Thank you.